Public Employees Committee will be come to session right now. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Alderman Ortman. Alderman Villa. Here. Alderman Arnowitz. Alderwoman Murphy. Present. Alderwoman Spencer. Here. Alderwoman Green. Alderman Ogilvy. Here. Chairman Williamson. Here. Five present. You have a quorum. All right. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. And we have a couple of board bills here. We have board bill 139, which is a paid bill from the treasurer's office. And uh, we have two speakers from the treasurer's office. We have Mr. Johnson and Mrs. Rucek. So if you don't mind taking those chairs right there, please. And we'll, uh, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So will we take them together or you want to do one at a time? One at a time. All right, awesome. Well, uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Leonard Johnson. I'm Deputy Chief of Staff for the Treasurer's Office. I have with me Shirley Ruchik, who is our Director of Administration. Uh, she oversees our uh, Human Resources Department as well as our Payroll Department. Uh, board Bill 139 is a simple board bill. Uh, it is repealing. Board Bill um, Ordinance Number 69195. Basically, the only thing that we're doing with this bill uh, is reflecting our new staffing uh, model that we have in place. If you looked at the old board bill, there were some positions that were eliminated under the previous treasurer that were still included in that old board bill. Uh, there are some positions that uh, Treasurer Jones has since added, and this is basically just accurately reflecting the staffing model that we have in place. Also making sure that we have the proper grades for each individual um, that's a full-time employee. And then the only other thing uh, worth mentioning uh, is the fact that we have all of the minimum and maximum requirements with the 2% in line with what the City of St. Louis did. Um, this is modeled after the City's pay ordinance as well. Uh, it just includes the staff that we currently have for our uh, Treasury Division. Okay, and um, I guess with the treasurer's office, it's approximately what, 13 employees? No, sir, it's more like seven. Seven, seven mm -hmm. four timers. The, the previous um, pay ordinance listed probably close to 25 positions. Mm -hmm. um, and so many of these positions were just never used. I see. And as Mr. Johnson mentioned, um, just we have some new positions mm -hmm. and um, so I basically minimized it and created the titles that are actually uh, used in the organization today. All right, thank you. All right, so we'll go around the table. Have Alderman Villa, you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are how many fewer employees under the new pay scale? Um, as far as the employees were always there, as far as the positions, you know, Prior, the payroll ordinance had all these positions, but we didn't have a body. An employee, so uh, there was person. the title was there. However, there was no one actually doing that job, and so we didn't eliminate any jobs uh, in the treasury division. Uh, I want to say back <coughs> one change was uh, when uh, we had an assistant treasurer that left. The chief of staff for the treasury division uh, became the new assistant treasurer. We never hired for that chief of staff position in treasury. Um, that's about it. Most. Of, not most, every single employee that was there two years ago or is still or there. Five years ago or still And then they were probably had a title that did not reflect the actual job that they did. And so we did, uh, we worked with a consultant very early on back in 2013. Uh, and that was, we did duty assignments for each and every person and just tried to accurately reflect the job that they're doing. Okay, so, and I don't, be careful here. What, so, Ryan Wabi and Steve Baker, their title, their now, their positions are be, are filled with someone else. So actually, those two gentlemen. I'm not sure about Brian Wabi, but Steve Baker was you part use of the, the term gentleman usually. But <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Steve Baker was a part of the parking division, and so that Good point. this Sorry. is the treasurer's office pay right. bill. The second one will be the parking division pay bill. These are investments. The folks who actually cut the checks in that side of the house. Mm -hmm. okay. Garnishments. In the, in the absence of us doing this. Would you still get the one and a half or two percent that all the city employees get as a patron of job? So we did not include that in our payroll ordinance. Um, this past year, we did not 
receive merit increases. Oh. But we have in the past. Now, was that, what was we, that an oversight or did you? No. You just found fiscal Jesus. Um, it wasn't my decision. <laughs> but we did not do increases. Because we did. I don't remember doing one for the treasurer's office last year, did we? This no. is the first pay bill, actually, that, that we're submitting under Treasurer Jones, who came into office January 2013. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to that, it was Mr. Williams. Um, I've been at the treasurer's office for about nine years, and never consistently did the treasurer's office give out raises every year. It, it wasn't like with the city. Right. What we did do was, um, on page number two, the biweekly range of pay and hold dollars. Mm -hmm. When the city did in their payroll ordinance increase 2%, they increased these numbers. So I also increased these numbers. Okay. <coughs> Alderman, I'll pose the same question I posed to uh, Alderman Ogilvy. Now, if you want to uh, do a committee substitute and guarantee that 2%, increase I, I'll be more than happy to have that but I'm going to amend this to eliminate you because you make too much noise <laughs> over there on the side every Friday that's what I'm going to do <laughs> I, I have no further questions Mr. Chairman I just learned something thank you okay you're welcome thank you all right all the women uh, uh, yes so no my understanding is if, if you don't uh, pass this bill out of committee your employees will not receive a raise at all? So our raises thing. are not contingent oh, upon no, pay, pay, pay ordinance. Okay. It's just a reconfiguration of their grades. Of oh, your grades. Pretty much. Okay. Basically to accurately reflect the positions. The positions. Okay. For example, I have the old, you know, or the current ordinance, I apologize, right. in here. Right. And we have a position that's called investment specialist or investment control accountant two, investment control accountant one. These are positions that, you know, aren't accurately reflected okay. in the people that we have working there right now. We don't have these people. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Honorable Woman. Honorable Woman Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the, res the, tre the raises at the Treasurer's Office, they're contingent upon what? They're not contingent upon this. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how do races within the treasurer's office come about? So in the... So on the parking side, mm -hmm. it's two. On the parking side, if, if there was a raise that would be included, that would be handled through uh, the parking commission, and that would be in our, uh, uh, that would be in our budget. For the treasury okay. division, theirs is sometimes driven off what the city does just because Treasury does have some payments that come out of the city's overall board bill one. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these positions are funded there that none of ours are in line with. So sometimes they will have that 2% mm -hmm. and we don't get it on the parking side. So Ms. Spencer, to um, better answer your question, we do yearly performance evaluations. Mm -hmm. We start the process in March of every year. And then based upon um, the employee receiving a three or above, which is a satisfactory rating we have in the past, Last year we did a 2%, the year before I believe we also did a 2%. Mm -hmm. um, however, and then we budget that in for that next fiscal year. But this year, uh, the office, and this was you a know, decision of myself, we did not do increases at all. It wasn't uncommon not to get an increase though prior to uh, Ms. Jones taking office either. Oh, yeah. So when we got in here, uh, there were folks who had worked here seven, eight, ten years and had never received a raise. Uh, so when the mayor uh, initiated the 1010 ordinance uh, or the 1010 requirement uh, as a minimum, we did the same thing across the board for all of our employees. Uh, in addition to that, we did try and there was, say a person was working here for three years, they came in and uh, for whatever reason, uh, for whatever reason, they were making more money than someone who had been doing that exact same job for seven or eight years. And so what we tried to do was to come up with minimums for years of service as well and trying to align people. That didn't happen much on the treasury side. That's why I wasn't talking sure. about it. Okay. It happened mostly sure. on the parking sure. side of the sure. house. Sure. Treasury is pretty cut and dry. 70 okay. people who work over there. I'll tell you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Ogilvy. Um, thank you. So 
personnel assigns the grades to each position, is that correct? We do, okay. and cur currently with our current pay bill, what happens is if we are hiring, say for example myself as an example, I am actually, if you look at the parking division ordinance, I'm classified, my class title is internal auditor because there is no class title that accurately represents my position. But just just the the, the grade and the range, these, these grades are set by personnel and then treasury and parking are looking at the equivalent positions Correct. for let's say accountant two. Mm -hmm. And so if, if an accountant two in the comptroller's office, for instance, has the same grade assignment as accountant two in treasurer's office. So it might not necessarily be the same, but I did try to be as consistent as possible. So I had to look at, for example, we have an accountant that we call him, he's our accounting. He's our accountant one. I know what he makes. So I did look at the city's pay bill and the comptroller's. And, um, you know, I did try to keep those grades as consistent as possible. Okay. As close as possible. But say our employee was only making 30000 and their account one position <coughs> might be a 17M. I couldn't make our account one position a 17M. Maybe I chose a 16M or 15M. Okay. Right. Um, and so in, in, in these two bills, did some of the grade change from the, the, the ordinance that's in effect right now? Yes. Okay. I'm just curious. Yes, so let's see. Um, so in the current ordinance, we have a clerk one that's a 5G. They have a clerk two, they have a clerk three, they got a clerk secretary one, a clerk secretary two, an account clerk one, a payroll clerk, clerk for an administrative clerk one. So they have all these clerk positions. So we tried to be more streamlined it and we called it a treasury clerk one. Okay. And made it a 7G. Got it. Okay. I think I can follow that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, we used to have a fiscal unit over there in the treasury's department. Uh, and they were kind of like, Part of the salary was paid by the treasury and part was paid by the comptroller. So is that still in existing with your fiscal, or do you still have a fiscal so, unit? So, Mr. Make? Williamson, yes. So um, I know exactly what you're talking about. We did have, um, in our parking division, mm -hmm. our chief fiscal operator of officer um, used to be Ed Rack, right. and he's retired. Um, that's a part of the parking division. Bill. The 140, the next one. Okay. The next one. So but it you was that position? out of the treasurer's office over to the parking division? It was never part of the treasurer's office. Okay. It was a part of the parking division. I see. And the current parking division pay bill does talk about what we need to pay into the general fund for that particular position because I, I believe at some point Mr. Eck was shared with the comptroller's office. But I did remove that language from the parking, from this next bill, from the parking division bill. I did remove that. We do have a chief fiscal officer in replacement of Mr. Rack, and we are 100% liable for a salary. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, I'll entertain a move, a motion to move the pass out board bill 139. So moved. Second. Okay. Madam Director, call roll, please. Alderman Ortman. Alderman Villa. Aye. Alderman Arnowitz. Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderwoman Green. Alderman Ogilvie. Aye. Chairman Williamson. Aye. Five items votes do pass. All right, board bill one thing pass up, do pass recommendation. Okay, we'll take up board bill 140. Uh, board bill 140, uh, again, uh, same scenario as board bill 139, except we're looking at our parking division, uh, which does include the fiscal department that you were talking about. Uh, this will be repealing ordinance number 69196. Again, accurately reflecting some of the positions uh, that are no longer here. Uh, I know in the past we had, say, a director for on-street parking and off-street parking. Uh, one of those changes was when we now have a parking administrator who oversees all of our parking, um, both on and off-street. <sighs> trying to think of any other <coughs> title changes. Also, if I can point out that the current ordinance, which was passed in 2012, did not reflect the fact that we had outsourced a division of our parking division. Yep. 
So we still have positions in here that were our employees that took care of the parking meters, mm -hmm. parking crew workers. So that has all been removed to reflect that we no longer have that type of um, job position available. And that's the same thing with the grades. Um, try to stay as consistent across the board um, for similar positions in other departments throughout the city. Um, and then also accounting in that second chart um, for the biweekly minimum and maximums uh, or that the city established in its pay bill. And then in section seven on page six, that's where we remove the language pertaining to that chief fiscal officer position, Mr. Williamson. Alderman Villa, the 2% increase isn't in there, and my salary is actually attached to this one, so you want to make the committee sub. I, I, Again, you know, I think it'd be easier for me to explain that to my boss than <laughs> I'm going in and say, "Hi, oh, Mr. Chairman, would you have him quit picking off the <laughs> <laughs> I have a very fragile you psyche. Go <laughs> <laughs> to, to the budget director on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Chief of Staff with the Parking Division. Well, first of all, how many employees are with the uh, Parking Division? Full-time full -time employees, we have 108. 108. Budgeted for, right now, we probably have 100 on staff. Okay, and part-time, I guess, dealing with your garages. Part-time, so yeah, we have regular part-timers that work at the garages. We also have the event workers that are more like a per performance, and I would approximate at about 40 right now. With the hockey season starting, we're looking for event workers now. So what does the chief of staff do with the parking division? So our chief of staff um, pretty much oversees uh, both staff in Treasury and in the parking division. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much sets the uh, policies uh, and carry out the strategic planning for the treasurer's office. Uh, works under the treasurer. Uh, pretty much all of our executive staff reports to the chief of staff. Uh, think that's the, his job in a nutshell. Okay, very good. All right. Alderman Villa, any questions? I, I wasn't clear. What, what, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What, what have you outsourced? Uh, the uh, meter maintenance, the cause, uh, meter collections, uh, the meter, meter crews. We don't do that in-house anymore. That occurred, I believe it was 2009. Nine, under the Mr. previous Williams. administration. We've continued with that. Uh, actually, we had two contracts at the time. Uh, Ms. Jones came into office. One was for meter maintenance, so those were the folks who actually fixed the meters if they gotten broken. Uh, the other was on the collection side and the uh, um, citation side. And so one uh, vendor was doing meter maintenance and then collecting the meters as well. And then a separate vendor actually did citation management in um, the parking violations bureau. Uh, so they had staff in those two directions. Over the last uh, couple of years, as we've upgraded our meter technology, we put all that into one contract uh, that didn't give us a couple hundred thousand dollars in savings uh, and will be uh, more realized savings over time as well by having one contract instead of contracting with two different vendors. Uh, so we have now an integrated parking system where our parking meters are now talking to themselves where that wasn't the case previously. Just to kind of clear you up, Alderman, uh, I was here then and doing the Ways and Means Committee meeting. Larry Williams, the former treasurer, came in along with Tom Scoff and they explained the situation of really contracting it out. Now, we sat through the meeting. We were totally against it. We didn't want that to happen because, you know, of the patron system and what have you. But basically what happened, they went to Jeff City, and, which being the county office, he got it done in Jeff City. And, and it, that's how it ended up being the way it is today. I will point out, no, uh, <coughs> surely you probably saw more of that than I did, but uh, for the most part, uh, most of those folks actually kept their jobs, or if they did not stay within the parking division, they were reassigned to other portions of the treasurer's office. Um, but 
there wasn't uh, like everybody just got fired on a day that a new contract happened. Right. As many of those jobs that we could save, we did um, true. for those people mm -hmm. to stay in those jobs. And then for those who didn't get it, who were good employees, uh, Mr. Williams found a way to find them other work to do within the treasurer's office. So I meet people all the time uh, throughout the division who are like, oh yeah, I used to actually collect the meters, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. or used to collect like money that. from the meters, mm -hmm. yeah. But now they might be a custodial worker mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Maintenance or something, officer. parking enforcement. So they're still with us. I, I would assume that <clears throat> because of the complexities of the guts of the meters now, a, a normal person like me that used to have that as a summer job I mean, those were very coveted, mm -hmm. and my father knew somebody. So I would, I mean, the only thing you used to break would be the keeper or your coin guide, and, and if I can fix it, and I am mechanically brain dead, anybody could fix a meter. But now, I don't even know how to work one. <laughs> as recently as this morning, I put six quarters, I guess, yes. in at the South Five City quarters. Diner, so. Um, but, but uh, so we, Oversimplified, Frank, we didn't, you know, I know you and I are evil, but mm -hmm. you, you would have tried to save any patronage jobs we had because of, we because they're patronage to, jobs. Right. I know they're evil. But <laughs> yeah. We attempted to a ways and means, but it okay. didn't work out, and they said, okay, that's fine. So we went to Jeff City and got mm -hmm. it done. Because, you know, them being a county office, they really didn't need our mm -hmm. blessing. They just came in and explained to us what they wanted to do, how this will save them money by contracting it out. And I guess it had a lot to do with, you know, insurance and what have you and so forth and so on. So that's what happened. Is it fair to ask you two young people, the uh, money that uh, Treasurer Jones has uh, promised for the, uh, the Metrolink study, is that, did that happen? Is that $2 million gone? Uh, I don't think the entire $2 million is gone. I believe we're going to start getting bills somewhere in the next few weeks or so. Uh, I believe East West Gateway Council of Government uh, is overseeing that process and they, we will basically be on retainer with them and that will start, I don't know if it's a bi-weekly or monthly uh, uh, cash flow, but yes, we've signed the agreement with them that's been executed at this point and somewhere soon uh, cash will start exchanging hands. But it won't be a lump sum of $2 million, it'll be a monthly billing, I think. <coughs> and are the... Uh how are the new meters, how is it working? I think um, we've found one, uh, compliance has totally increased now that people have multiple forms to pay. Uh, so we're writing 85,000 uh, less tickets uh, over the last fiscal year than we did the previous fiscal year. Um, in addition to that, uh, you know, folks have issues with parking, uh, they now can prove their case a lot easier. Um, so the Parking enforcement officers want if they write you a ticket and you're at a yellow curb and you say, I wasn't at a yellow curb, well, they can take a picture now. Uh, you can do a lot of your adjudication either via email now. Uh, so if you paid for parking, let's say through the mobile app and your parking session should expire at one o'clock, you got a ticket at 1230, well, you can send us a copy of your receipt and not even come into the office for that. Um, they'll be able to take care of that ticket for you. Uh, so there have been some glitches um, over time. I think now uh, we're starting to see our officers are moving in a, a little bit more uh, on the street as far as the technology. When you switch from an older, and I mean they've really jumped a couple generations. They went from an older mm -hmm. box. Uh, the technology now almost works with cell phones um, where you can write a ticket and you print it if you want to old, do it. You know. Not old, just the technology <laughs> no, has evolved. Has uh, but overall I think the new system has been good for the city. It, it, also gives a good facelift to our sidewalks now that we have those newer meters. Is it fair to ask you how many tickets I have to accrue before, how often do you boot cars and have them towed as a result of non-payment? So it is, that is a fair question. Uh, we have not changed that. One thing I do want to point out when we went to the new system was previously uh, you had about two weeks uh, to pay a, a, a ticket before it would become delinquent and double. Uh, now we extended that to three weeks, so you have 21 days to pay before that ticket will double on you. Um, once that ticket goes to us, it doubles twice. So within three weeks it doubles, and then a couple weeks after that it'll double again if you do not pay it. Um, however, if you have four delinquent tickets, all of them, you've got four tickets, you didn't pay any of them, mm -hmm. they went into delinquent status, you are now boot eligible. Um, most folks uh, try and not become boot eligible. I tell folks, 
to pay a ticket uh, before it go into uh, uh, delinquent status uh, would be my, my thing to tell folks. And then if they get, some folks even find a way to beat the system. If they know they have three, they'll make sure they pay the fourth one so they don't go delinquent on four tickets and be boot eligible. How, how aggressively though, how often do we, do we, Oh, do we boot a car yeah. and we, toll? Is sure, that we a have, weekly occurrence. No, no, no. We have a it's daily. We have a boot crew that actually does that work. Um, so if parking enforcement officers are out on the street and they're writing tickets, uh, that license plate to come up in this, their handheld and it'll let them know they're boot eligible. Um, from there, they will then dispatch to the boot crew who will come out and boot that car. We had a the thieves in the southeast corner of the city down in the eleventh ward, which I attempt to represent. They stole Illinois license plates, put them on a car, parked in front of a house, took their plates off yeah. the car, mm -hmm. and then we came and booted the car with the mm -hmm. Illinois plates that had 40-something tickets mm -hmm. wow. gone. And I mean, the people just went crazy. Sure. No, and when <laughs> things like that happen, that's yeah. a very, yeah, that's very, good, very huh? complicated <laughs> thing. But oh, call God. us. We can, we can sort can through those type of issues. It, you know, it might take us a little while to kind of figure out what's going on there, but as, as long as we can tell what the facts are, that that couple wouldn't have had any issues with claiming their vehicle without having to pay any fees. Mm -hmm. But that does happen. Also, you do, Alderman, um, having done this for a few years now, I was a little bit more optimistic uh, when I first took the job, uh, but there are folks who will switch plates on their vehicles. There are folks mm -hmm. who uh, run a, a plate, they have two vehicles, they'll switch them off on those two different cars, uh, you write the ticket, one day it's on a truck, the next day it's on an actual mm -hmm. uh, vehicle, uh, so that does uh, occur as well. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My, my questions have not been germane to Board Bill 140, <laughs> so I apologize for that. But I'm, I'm learning. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just one question. We, you said we have one contractor now for that enforcement, <coughs> and who is that? And uh, sure, a Xerox. So we did a Xerox pilot with and uh, for how long? four. Um, that first initial contract, I want to say, was three years, if I'm not okay. mistaken. Mm -hmm. Okay. With the option to renew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All women's Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, uh, along the lines of the uh, switching of the tags and all that, do we have any employees in the uh, parking division that are able to run VINs, to check for stolen vehicles, uh, things of that nature? Yes. So, do we have we employees do have in our office, yes. Yes. How many employees uh, in the parking division are, are those? That information it should be sent out to all of the handhelds, so we get police data. Um, if police are looking for certain vehicles, uh, we those are demarcated in code. Um, the police will send a list over. Though that list is sent in a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet is then uploaded into the system. It's called ETIMS. That's our ticket issuing software is called ETIMS that we get from Xerox. So that's uploaded into ETIMS. If our um, folks were to encounter those vehicles, that will send up a message for them. They can then dispatch a call um, back to the office and they will get the police on those vehicles. That doesn't happen, um, say though, um, even on the other side of the say if it's like an under of undercover um, cop car, um, our compliance officers get that information, so everyone doesn't have that. So you have a few staff, our supervisors and compliance, so I guess that would be about six or seven folks who would have access to that side of their data. So everybody that has a handheld, if, they, if you're writing a ticket for a car that's parked illegally, uh, does the software automatically check if that's a stolen vehicle? No. It wouldn't do that automatically. Um, when you're running the VINs, really, it, basically you're looking at the person's plate. Yes. Um, and sometimes um, that plate could go to another vehicle, as, as we just alluded to, yeah. right. or folks can switch those out. Sure. So we do have a handful of staff, though, that gets data from the police department and can keep their eyes out for certain vehicles. But that's not the general parking enforcement. So how many, fo how many, how many? About seven. I want to say it's our supervisors in compliance. Uh, we have, uh, with Lenny and his crew, is that four? For ETIMS? Mm -hmm. For the supervisors. Uh, Just yes, four, Lenny, including Lenny. Okay, and then Rogers and Osby. So about six. Okay. So um, when you have when when a, when, a, uh, when we have expired plates, for example, which is pretty common, mm -hmm. um, uh, are we when we're issuing a parking ticket, uh, are we taking a look at those types of things and? 
So um, the only time the plate will become an issue uh, if folks know our folks are not the police. Mm -hmm. So sure. they um, can't write a ticket, say, just for an expired ta tag. That would be something the police could do. Um, but no, they're not there for that. Uh, what about if this type wheels are missing, windows are broken, and things of that nature? Now, we do have those, yes. Derelict vehicles, we can't write on those. And what do you write on those? Um, there's a uh, code, I want to say, for either work on a... For sale. On a street, <laughs> either work on a street. Um, I, I I forget the proper term. I can get back to you. Okay. But like you can't do work on your vehicle right. on the street if you sure. remove the tires or something. There's actually, uh, and we've had that uh, where I can recall an incident happened over the summer uh, where a young lady uh, blew her tire. She left, yeah. took the tire off, went to a tire shop. She actually got a ticket by the time she had gotten oh, back okay. to the car. So I forget the name of the citation, but there is something that exists out there for that. Right. What, the reason I'm going down this path, one of the frustrations that we have uh, in the neighborhoods I represent, and I think it's a pretty pervasive problem, mm -hmm. is that we have um, derelict cars, vehicles that are un unlicensed with expired tags littering the streets of our neighborhoods. And a lot of times, you know, neighbors will call CSB, a parking enforcement officer will come out, issue a ticket, put it on the window, and that car will continue to sit there derelict mm -hmm. for weeks on end with no resolution. And, um, I'm, and so my question is whether we're not only ticketing, if, you know, if we're not only ticketing <laughs> for um, the illegal parking, but also you know, mm -hmm. some of the other issues that they're having and if there's a way to make those connections. And I really, I, I, my question is as well, as the aldermen of the 11s are not Remain to this board bill, but um, we got you here. But we got you here, <laughs> and uh, and as looking through through all the all, all, all the positions we have, do we have um, a connection or any any staff members that are, uh, are are we directing any of the specific staff members to keep our eye out, as you said? Sure. Um, so we do have a couple investigators who are dedicated to the CSB reports. They get those on a daily basis. Um, we can't just go and tow a person's car, although it, it might be an eyesore for the neighborhood. Um, unless only time we can tow a vehicle is if it gets into that four ticket delinquent status. And so one of the things that they will do is say, come out and hit them for um, five day continuous parking without moving that vehicle, that's a citation. Um, if it's a derelict vehicle, I forget again the code for that, but they'll they'll hit them with as many citations as they could get um, okay. in that one fell swoop. And um, if you know no one's compliant after it gets delinquent, they can come back out and then have that car uh, towed and removed. If the vehicle is parked in say uh, uh, intersection or uh, in a uh, unsafe area, they can initiate mm -hmm. tow faster. Okay. Um, well, one of the issues we have is, you know, somebody will call, call, it's not parked in an intersection, it's just parked on the street, but the expectation of the neighbor is that I've called it in and it should be dealt with. And all that usually happens is one ticket is issued and CSB request is checked off and the car continues to sit there and the neighbor calls one of us and is irritated and we have to explain that you have to call four times. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, which is not a very clear process, and it, it, it would be my hope that we could, at least with some of those that are very obviously windows broken, it looks like it hasn't run in a while, it's been deposited on a street rather than parked at one, sure. uh, we could make some kind of uh, notation within parking enforcement that the parking enforcement officer would circle back around and continue to check on that. Our, our investigators do. Um, when they find out that it's an issue like that, they will do another circle. They will stay on top of it. I've observed it. I've been on the other side of the phone trying to explain to folks at least how things work from citizens who were a little mad and felt mm -hmm. like we were overly aggressive in the sure. enforcement. Sure. Um, so it does happen. Um, I think okay. having also experienced that um, with folks parking on private property and things like that. There's nothing our uh, parking enforcement yes, officers sure. could do about it unless I wanted to have those folks private towed off my property myself. Um, so it, it just kind of depends. Um, but yes, if you have specific issues too, by all means, please make us aware of it and then we can get on top of that and, and make sure we keep a watchful eye on it as okay. well. well the last question is, 
we, with, with a tow zone, with a tow away, no, a no parking tow away zone, is the parking division in that case authorized? That could then, yeah, prompt. I know some um, snow okay. routes and things like that are designated that way. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, uh, yeah, if it's a designated tow away zone, yes. Okay. Yes. We'll Except to, on we'll, private property. We'll, we'll have to talk offline because I have a couple of tow away zones that are not getting towed. Up. Sure. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and I will say for the compliance side of the house, we do have, it's only a couple people uh, outside of the supervisors who work dedicated full time there and they're covering the entire city. Yeah. yeah. Well, and maybe that's an issue of trying to understand if we have enough staff. I, I, you know, we, it is my experience that we have a very significant problem with deposited cars, mm -hmm. cars with expired plates. Mm -hmm. It is a very significant pervasive problem in the neighborhoods that you know I live in. There's cars yeah. on every, there, there is a, an illegally parked car on every block and it seems like um, and so from that perspective I think I don't, we should maybe discuss if there's not if it's a staffing issue. It sure. is also very confusing in my opinion whether or not the CSB complaint goes to, to your office or goes to streets who's dealing with the complaint whether it's a safety issue or not and towing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, to your point, and we're, I'm just editorializing, the people, I think, oftentimes think because they get a Citizen Service Bureau complaint number that that is a silver bullet of sorts. A man called me that it, his Citizen Service Bureau complaint number, I mean, he has a crumbling curb. Well, of all the problems in the 11th Ward, crumbling curbs are not in my top 10. And that, that he'll have that Citizen Service Bureau number till. You know, you're Pope. I mean, we're, we're the city, we don't have the wherewithal to, to go out and, and fix that curb. So the, he can take that number and I guess make it part of his memoirs. I, 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 that, that is just a big misconception. And I think, Frank, you're the only one here that is, I guess, in this room old enough. We took a pretty good scalpel uh, after Chief Mokwa and the tow lot That's scandal. Right. Mm -hmm. We we That's pretty right. much emasculated that department to the point where there just ain't that many of them mm -hmm. like there used to be. Used to be a, a, a big business, and yeah. then we in effect let the big business <laughs> kind of get get out of hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shame on us. Right. And now it's a lot more difficult to get cars towed. And to yes. your point, sure. there are probably more now than ever. Sure. And, and is it my understanding then that the streets department has its own tow operators and that the parking division has its own tow operators? No, we use city tow. You use city tow. Mm -hmm. We dispatch so to city tow. You dispatch to city tow. Okay, I see. It used to be the police, just like Automobile said, but after this candle, right. it just kind of slowed everything down. I have the same problem you have. We have a lot of derelict cars. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're yeah. stolen. They sit. Sure. They sit. Yeah. They yeah. sit. And like uh, Mr. Johnson said, you have to get four tickets. Yeah. And then I think it's up to you guys to tow it, right? You call city tow, yep. not the police. Mm -hmm. It used to be a whole police thing. But yeah. the police have kind of been taken out of it. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, after that. It's a combination of things. It, it, yeah. And it's, and it's uh, I know we're. Down. I, I'm uh, more than any other member of the board, I'm more excited about traffic calming than the rest of you. Having, having said that, I can take you to different homes in my ward tonight where five or six tickets can be written because they just park the trucks there with, they, they take a plate and put it on, go to, and then they take mm -hmm. the plates off. The, there's trucks sitting around with no plates at all. <coughs> yeah. and, and I think that, it, yeah. I mean, it, it would take kind of a combined effort Yes. To, to put mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. to somehow kick that thing in the teeth or at least start mm -hmm. to pull it to teeth. Sure. And we're, I don't, you know, I don't know if we had the wherewithal to be a, a proactive. Coordination of efforts would help. Mm -hmm. sure. I agree. Sounds, I was going to say, yeah, we're, so I with, think with we're very open to trying to be as helpful here <clears> as <throat> possible and doing what we can. And um, if that means us, the street department, and um, even city to all sitting down with a few of you guys to just kind of hammer out the main concerns and issues and seeing how we can best utilize our resources to address it more properly. That, yeah, that's in, so in, fine. In dealing with the police, they'll write the tickets just like you guys write the tickets. Mm -hmm. If you talk to the police officer, hey, how soon we can get it towed? Oh, oh, oh. Right, right, right. Everybody's going to They back off, say, hey, how soon the treasure's off? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the take now. 
And, and just from uh, one last clarification, is the parking division able to write tickets for missing tags? And those are separate tickets than just a, you know, you get a 10 or $15 parking ticket, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so do you, are, are you able to? Yeah, we don't write on your registration issues. We mm -hmm. write on your parking issues. Mm -hmm. So if it's an issue with how you're parked, or if you're parked illegally, we can write on that. Um, but just to walk up to your car, I don't think we have jurisdiction to do that. But the police can do that. So, and the police do it all the time. Sure. Who would write sure. for an expired plate sure. and derelict vehicle. Sure. Um, they have sure. the power to do that. Sure. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'm an OV. I don't have okay. any questions. Okay. All right. Any more questions? If not, I move to pass out board bill 140. Second. Previous row. Previous row. Okay. Board bill 140 has been passed out with due pass recommendation. I want to thank everybody for coming. Appreciate it. And uh, we're standing session. We're standing up. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. 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 Thank you.